everybody so today's tutorial is a little bit different I'm constantly getting asked how I do my nude nails so I thought I would show you today I do shape them to be slightly almond and then as the two weeks rolls on they will soften off slightly at the tip and become a little bit more oval so this is what we're starting with we've got a three week grow off as you can see the product doesn't lift anywhere but you can get a tiny bit of a little dip as your nail starts to grow off because it is still a gel so I've literally just soaked my nails off. They look a little bit red and dehydrated because of the acetone. I've shaped my nails. I'm now going in with the C and D cuticle away to remove any of the non-living tissue around the cuticle and side walls of the nail. Usually when you go to a nail salon to have your nails done, they will work straight on top of your cuticle once they've applied this gel. But the tip with this, and it is a game changer, is to leave it to soak in for around 15 to 20 minutes if you've got the time. You almost want it to completely soak in so that your nails end up almost looking dry. This is going to lift every single piece of dead tissue that you've got around your cuticles with so much ease. I promise you it's a game changer. You'll also see on the very tips of my nails, I have got a very thin layer of that gel still in place. That doesn't bother me too much because this is the sort of gel you can just work straight on top of. I'm taking this nail prep tool which is double ended. One side is a cuticle pusher and this side is a bit of a sharp blade that removes all of the dead tissue from the nail plate. It's really important to place the edge of the tool flat against the nail plate so that there's no pressure and it just glides over the nail lifting off the dead tissue now this is really sharp so just make sure you don't apply too much pressure because having soaked those cuticle areas it doesn't take any pressure at all. You could even do this with an orange wood stick. So as you can see the cuticle area and the side walls are lovely and clean. These still need to be washed but as you can see the actual plate is super clean from dead skin. Not everybody's nails are going to be exactly the same. Some of you will have more dead skin than others but you'll be surprised by how much you have when you use this method of soaking. Nail prep is definitely the most important thing when it comes to wearing gel polish. Often you will get a lot of lifting or if you use cheap products they will stick to the nail and won't come off until you soak them but then you'll see underneath often the nail doesn't always look too healthy. So once you've done that give the nails a good wash. I did a little online course about how best to use this gel. I am trained in nails but I wanted to know how to use this exact gel so I did a little course with Jane Todman. Her top tip was to keep this bottle at body temperature. So either put it down your bra or when you're sitting there, put it between your thighs because it's really going to help liquefy the product because it's quite a thick gel. So this is called Builder in a Bottle, also known as BIAB, and it's a soak off gel ideal for building and creating strong overlays as a strengthener for natural nails. So the shade I'm using is called Teddy, as you can see it's very sheer but once you start to build it up it becomes opaque and is the perfect nude. So I like to start in the middle of the nail, pull the colour down to completely coat the nail and then push that back towards the cuticle. We are leaving the tiniest of gaps between the nail plate and the cuticle so we have a tiny trench around the edge where the top coat can sit so it still doesn't touch the skin but it does seal the nail polish in. So I'm going quite slow so I've got time to talk about what I'm doing and so you guys can see. You do want to cap off the free edge but only with a very tiny amount. This stuff is not going anywhere. It's so good. So with this very thin first layer I do all of the nails in one go, cure them. Then I like to do one nail at a time to build it up and cure it because it is a fluid product and it is going to run away with you very quickly if you're not careful. I'd been using this gel for quite some time before I see that Jane Todman was doing a little live over on Instagram and I paid to see the actual tutorial of her using it because she has some amazing tips and she's a really good nail artist and although I don't do it professionally anymore I obviously still do my own nails and my twin sister's nails. My natural nails are so thin, they are like paper. My hair used to split my nails, that's how thin they are. And it was always a struggle for me to grow them. And using this product has enabled me to be able to grow my nails and keep them long. And I've not had any accidents or problems with them since I've been using this product. I would always end up snapping them with gel or the gel would peel off at the edges. Whereas this stuff is fantastic and it just doesn't shift. Now they do recommend that this is cured for 99 seconds in their own lamp so I did invest in it because this has a low heat set in and it prevents those heat spikes that you often get with gel. Now the first layer has cured we're going in with a second layer and for this you want to repeat the same process so you want it to be nice and thin. 
Think of this as a slip layer for your next bead that you're going to apply. This is going to tell your gel where it's going to sit. That first initial layer that we applied is cured, so it's gone hard. So any gel that we place straight on top of that will just sit in a bead on top. But because we're applying a thin wet layer, the gel that we apply next is going to slowly melt into itself, which gives you a little bit of working time, but you do have to keep your eye on it. So we're taking a slightly thicker layer, starting towards the back of the nail, and we're going to very softly with the edge of the brush work it backwards and forwards side to side as we do that we want to start pulling our brush up towards the very tip of the nail so we're dragging that bead up the nail all the while using a very very light hand because the gel does melt into itself there really is barely any work involved in this you are just manipulating the area that the gel is going to sit and because it does self level, I don't find I need to do any buffing on top of this once it's cured. Another amazing tip that Jane Todman gave was to use a striping brush to pull the gel down onto the side walls. This allows you to get really close to the edge of the nail but without touching the skin. You can also use it to guide the gel towards the apex which is the very centre of the nail which should be the fullest area. As it is slippy you can find it will pull away from the very tip of the nail so just use the tip of your brush to guide it back and then turn your nail over for a few seconds to allow gravity to pull the gel towards the center of the nail which is the apex. Once you've done that you can then cure it. You can either do a full cure or you can do half a cure move on to the next one but make sure it's been in long enough that it doesn't ripple. So we're going to repeat the same process on the second nail. Use your brush to apply a slip layer first on top of your already cured first layer. I like to start again in the middle of the nail and then slowly push that nail polish back towards the cuticle. Don't go too close to your side walls with the thicker brush because you can go in with your striper to very carefully bring that colour down. Now remember not to cure this thin layer because you're going in with a slightly thicker bead this time starting towards the back of the nail and very carefully manipulating the gel with a very soft light hand and using the corners of the brush to pull that up the length of the nail bed. I don't personally like my nails to be too thick so I like to keep it as thin as possible but thick enough that it's opaque. You'll know if it's too thin because you'll still be able to see your natural smile lines showing through. You'll also be able to see thin areas where the polish is a bit uneven. So again, go in with your striper brush just to softly guide the gel into those areas that need a little bit more coverage. Don't forget to turn your fingers over to allow gravity to pull that gel to the apex and then turn it back over. And if you still need to manipulate the gel like this one, I'm just pulling it back to the very tip again. Once you're happy, get that straight into the lamp to cure because you don't want it to shift out of place because again, it will go very, very quickly. If you don't keep an eye on it, sometimes it can pull into the side walls and then it's a bit of a mess. Once you've already got a bit of a pull going on, it will want to slip back there. That's why this layer is really important, um, which is something I didn't do before I went on the little course with Jane Todman. If you are at all into nails, I will link her Instagram below because she does some beautiful work. I am by no means as good as she is when it comes to this particular product. However, doing it on myself is definitely a little bit harder, especially when you have to do the other hand. But as so many of you have requested it, I thought I would show you how I do it. I had featured a small clip of this in my vlog when I was doing my sister's nails. And again, lots of you DM'd me then asking for a tutorial, so here it is. So while I continue to show you my nails, because it's the same process, I'm not going to repeat what I'm talking about, but instead I will talk about the removal process. Now you can use an e-file if you are trained in using e-files. I find it easy enough just to soak off with acetone. With regular gel polish, I would use tin foil or tiny little nail clips to remove the gel. I would always very gently buff the surface layer off just so that the acetone can penetrate through that top layer easier. But with this stuff, I tend to use a soaking pot. That way I can lift a nail out at a time and use an orange wood stick to remove the soft layer as it penetrates with the acetone. Otherwise, I would need to keep undoing the foils or taking the clips off to keep tackling that top layer. It still only takes me about 15 minutes. But the other great thing about this product is you can do infills with it. So more often than not, I would do an infill rather than a full removal. 
Once that last nail goes in, I do a full solid two minute cure on full. Then I'm ready to apply the Gel Bottle Extreme Shine Top Coat. This is what gives that really beautiful glassy finish. Now this one is super fluid, you only need a very light amount and this definitely holds its shine really really well. By the third week they do look a little bit less glassy but they last so well. I mean I'm currently on week two today and they're still really really shiny. So make sure you get right down towards the cuticle, again still not touching the skin but touching the nail plate around that tiny trench that we left. The thicker that area is going to be the more you're going to notice it when the nails start to grow off. And I am ever so slightly capping that free edge but I'll be honest with you it isn't a necessity. I've always had trouble with normal gel or shellac lifting at the edges so capping off the edge was always really important for me but I kind of find I don't always do it and I never ever have any lifting anywhere with this product let alone the free edge. It is incredible. So once I've cured that for two minutes, this is what I'm left with. I've not put any cuticle oil in yet, but that would be the next stage. That's why I'm showing you it. But look how glass-like these look. I wanted to show you without the oil so you could see how shiny they were without oil. This is the only product I've used where my nails are able to grow without any breakages. It is the hardest they've ever been. I can literally open tins with these nails and they're not going to snap. And what I love is that it is a builder gel, so if you do have a slightly shorter nail, you can extend the nail with this product, much like you would with acrylic. I did extend my sister's nails in my vlog. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to list and link the brand below. This is not sponsored. It's exactly what I use on my nails. That's why I'm showing it to you. I'll also link Jane Todman's Instagram below in case you want to have a nosy. As always, please subscribe if you are new to my channel. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the tutorial. I know it's a little bit different, but hopefully you still found it interesting. Don't forget you can follow me outside of YouTube on my social handles, which will be on screen for you now. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week. Bye!